How are we doing everyone? This is episode 2 for the month of June, an absolutely crazy month. The submissions for this set are incredible, as you'll soon see. If you feel like submitting your own clips for next month, watch until the end of this video to see how. And otherwise, let's just kick things off and dive right in at number 10. Hey Daniel. Noch einer. Play this game for long enough and you'll realize there's nothing the community loves more than giving themselves extra restrictions and in this playthrough these four are using bow and crossbows only. Wer weiß nicht, wer der echte ist. One of the group in a black iron set appears to take on a tank roll, which means I suppose technically it's a shield slash crossbow slash bow run. Kämpf wie ein Mann, einer gegen vier. <laughs> das sieht so geil aus. <laughs> oh god. The invader was probably expecting a nice honorable duel, maybe a couple of New Game Plus co-op partners at a push. But now he's a pincushion. Survival Horrors is at number 9, and true to his name, he's going to encounter a netcode horror moment, but whether he survives remains to be seen. It's one of those chaotic Pontiff Cathedral invasions where anything goes. The Red Invaders are joining forces with this Aldrich Faithful, and later an avenging Dark Moon who creates a space time distortion of epic proportions. Once that passes and the fabric of reality has mended somewhat, the Aldrich gets the host alone and he doesn't miss his opportunity. Of course, we've all seen Riposte weapon swaps for maximum damage, but before that he swaps out the Black Knight shield, because that shield can't parry, into the Blessed Llewellyn shield, a shield known for having among the highest number of active parry frames. And then of course, the icing on the cake is the host rage quitting. It just couldn't be a more perfect ending. At number 8 we have Random Tony who is cheering for his friend, the host, who is battling Lady Maria. And unbelievably we have an incredible reverse Uno link back to last month's episode, when Stainmaster captured the moment a living failure entered into Lady Maria's boss fight. In this submission however, these summons were simply there as encouragement for the host who wanted to prove he could beat her solo. During her final stage, she decides to come out and greet them phasing through the fog door somehow and chasing the uninvited guests back into the Lumenwood Gardens. She is low health at this point so they do manage to finish her without too much trouble, much to the annoyance of the host. At this point it's getting quite obvious, there must be a deeper connection between the living failures and Maria. Their desire to reunite is growing stronger by the month. The seventh place is taken by Hagia Sophia, not sure we've had a submission from a building before. In this Ring City invasion he notices there's already an invader present called Radek, which makes it very likely a gank has taken place, so time is of the essence. A great chaos fire orb announces his presence, he then breaks the line of sight and creeps around behind the pillars swapping over to the Black Flame. He just don't miss, every spell was on point. That final Chaos Orb sniped not only the summon, but catches the host on his escape. That's some great 2 for 1 value. Number 6 is a Dark Souls 2 submission. He's invading on the Iron Keep Bridge wearing the Ring of the Living, probably for fashion reasons, which renders him human even though he's a spirit. Now the host is wearing the White Ring to give the appearance of a White Summon. The Dragon Rider Halbert has always been great for situations like these with a very wide AoE spin to win attack. Now in his pursuit of these two Chaos Blade Havel monsters, he has inflicted friendly fire on his fellow invader.
It does seem hard to believe, but the Red Invader really has switched sides completely. If you thought any of this was confusing, wait until you realise the Invader has now swapped out to a White Ring as well. Despite this, Shadow Edge stays calm and chases down the weak summon. This leaves him now in a momentary one-on-one -on -one with the traitor, a chance for some revenge. It's not over yet though, as he places down a healing warmth, another invader spawns in and appears to misidentify him as the host. It's difficult to see where this invasion went so wrong. Maybe all these imposter rings are a bad idea, I don't know. If it wasn't for that final warmth heal, all his effort would have gone to waste. But instead, he managed to beat down two Havel monsters and two imposter teammates with the power of spin to win. Coming in at number five is Mr. Forget About It, and he's showcasing one of my favorite things. That's right, a monstrously overpowered glass cannon one-shot build this is in Dark Souls 1, he's a level 36 Dragon Bro, lowering his health into Red Tearstone range. He also uses the Power Within Pyromancy, counterbalanced with the Dust Crown Ring. The ring cuts his health in half, which is good because Power Within drains health based on percentages of max HP, and the Sanctus Shield health regeneration helps out as well. The invasion begins in Red Tearstone range, this is the opportunity he's been waiting for the whole month. After many failed attempts, now is the time to take the high ground, prepare the glass cannon and take the leap of faith. Crushing multiple opponents with a surprise Dragon King Great Axe plunge attack is just good for the soul. I would recommend it to everyone. The epic vibes are building as Dark Matter brings us something unique we've never seen before. Will we love it or will we hate it? It might be a bit of both, I'm warning you now. Dark Matter has invaded the Undead Settlement and is going on a Dark Moon killing spree. A number of pyromancies and miracles are used here and comboed with each other. Chaos Bed Vestiges, Lightning Arrow and the main damage dealer, Black Flame. It's been all Dark Moon so far until this Mound Maker. Now, I almost don't know how to say this, but you're probably starting to notice something unusual happening. You know in that film 300 where the Persian says their arrows will blot out the sun? Well, this is the Dark Souls equivalent, but instead of arrows, it's forked pale tongues. He's keeping every single on-screen prompt visible after a kill, meaning all the shackle and tongue alerts you would normally press X immediately to remove are now blocking up the screen. This is incredibly stylish for two reasons. One is that you have visual trophies of your kill count as you fight. But two, you also have to be actually good enough to execute an extended kill streak like this with limited visibility. It's quite insane, and it goes on for a while, so since the prompts cap at 5, I'll just tell you, he killed over 15 opponents in this single invasion. Number 3 is a return to Dark Souls 1 with Hasaru, a poor lonely cleric in the Ulusil township. Hasaru is fat rolling, doesn't have the stats to use their equipment and seems to be caught completely by surprise. Psych! Menu swap to a full patches cosplay with a Dark Silver Tracer to obliterate his opponent's spine. The timing and execution was incredible, and this was such a clever concept in the first place. At number two, we have a very special kind of challenge run from Kami's in Dark Souls 1. This is the final boss, Gwyn Lord of Cinder, being attempted on a no rolling, blocking or parrying run. 
but with some twists. Normally, when you hear of challenge runners doing something like this, they use the reinforced club to loop stagger Gwyn, so we can't really fight back. But Cammy's ain't about that life, because he's doing this challenge with dragon form, bare fists only, in New Game Plus 6 at Soul Level 1. Now the issue is, fists need two hits plus a torso stone dragon roar to actually stagger Gwyn which is why Kami's deemed this run impossible and gave up for two years prior to this. Since then though, new techniques and strategies were discovered. The key of all of this was to lure Gwyn next to the only rock that works for this strap and try to keep him elevated here because most of his attacks have poor vertical tracking. This way he can punch out Gwyn's kneecaps effectively while avoiding his attacks simply by mastering geometry. Official rules for this challenge are attack with bare fists and dragon stones only, no iframes, rolling, blocking or parrying, and I will say it's one of those attempts where it's made to look so easy, but Kami's convinced me the grind behind this was very painful. This month, the number one spot is taken by a first time submitter. Welcome to the channel. This player is G9, and they are a Dark Souls 3 multiple tournament winner on PC and PlayStation. This clip today is nuts. Oh, come on. Amazing swap, GG. This is the kill to the first flame. It's the smallest, closed off, invadable area in Dark Souls 3. He summoned four of them as red invaders against him and one other white. Dude, look! <laughs> Assassin, man, you're letting me down. Although the white summon helping him dies pretty much instantly, which just goes to show that this setting is not for mere mortals like us. Two of the reds are summoned, so they're fully embered, and all four of them are tryhards. Since he's so outnumbered, G9 is using every trick up his sleeve, swapping weapons often to mix up his range and timings. This is streamed live on Twitch with his fan base on the PS4 Pro and therefore it has its own commentary, although not much of it because obviously he's concentrating so hard. The one advantage he does have is the invaders can inflict friendly fire, so they need to be cautious about overcommitting. But other than that, for most people this would be a completely impossible task. It kind of reminds me of those Minecraft videos where a whole team of people are chasing down a Minecraft pro and they can't kill him. Something like that. Anyway, I really recommend checking out the full clip on G9's channel. It's linked in the description along with all the other submitters. There's so many tense moments and incredible moves. It's very entertaining to watch. <laughs> to oblivion you! <laughs> Thanks so much for submitting everyone, I hope you'll agree this month was a banger. So many amazing clips, thank you to all of you, seriously. If you're interested in submitting for the next month of July, well this month because I'm a bit late, but you have to upload your clips to YouTube and send me the link in an email, top10souls at gmail.com. There's no specific topics, so just try and explain why your clip is so good in the email. This has been the top 10 plays for the month of June, a bit delayed, sorry for that, but I think the quality makes up for it, hopefully. Woo! Not too bad, not too bad.